this is another one that's sort of not on a weed list at the moment. Oh, okay. But it's, um, it's a bit of a pet project to some people around. Yeah. <laughs> it's caused a lot of um, harm in wetlands in the North Island. Okay. And so, in fact, some places in the North Island have pretty much destroyed wetlands. Um, and we have been finding at right around Christchurch about this quite a bit in the Travis wetland and the city council rangers have been doing uh, a really good job on getting on top of it there okay. um, and along with using contractors and it's another one of these ones that's been quite difficult to control. Um, it, <clears throat> this is just a baby, it climbs right up over other native plants okay, and, and tends them. to smother them yeah. Yeah, and forms really big clumps on the side of streams and and waterways. Um, in fact, some of the pictures I've seen in the North Island have sort of been humped up like that, right. quite quite dense. Um, so it's called Bigger's Tick. Bigger's Tick, yeah. Do you know where that name comes from? <laughs> I don't know where that name comes from, Karen, no. Um, it's, it's very, once again, it's yellow flowers. Yeah. <laughs> we love those yellow flowers. Uh, and then it forms a, a seed that's um, very sticky. Oh, in okay. fact, yeah, I'm not too hairy on the hands, but yeah. I, I've actually had had one of the little seeds in my hand. Turn your hand over like that, and it won't fall off. Really? Yeah, they're okay. quite amazing. So, so that's how it so that's how they spread around. Yeah. yeah, and and you can move them around without even knowing you're doing it. Okay. So, yeah. And what's the best way to control? This well, thing? they have they've mainly been hand pulling it, um, but there's an, a new, well, it's not a new herbicide actually. It's just called called Galon. It's been around for a while, but it's just sort of been reformulated and, and, and put back on the market recently and, and that's showing quite a bit of promise on okay. herbicide control and it and you just and, sprayed and, it? Yeah, yeah, and it um, it doesn't have too bad effect on water either because okay. that's the big one of the big problems. There are herbicides that can kill it but yeah. because it grows on that stream edge and in the water uh, you're pretty limited as to what you can actually use on it. So yeah. um, They've certainly used glyphosate but it does just tend to knock it down a bit and it comes right. back. So. Yeah, and, and sometimes with a lot of these plants too, um, the timing of when you apply herbicides is is, is important, if not or not more important than right. what you actually use. Okay. Yeah, so. And does that vary from plant to plant? It does, it really does, okay. yeah. Um, classic example of that is um, boxthorn, which is a prickly shrub around, and, yeah. um, and you spray it in the summer and nothing much happens, right. and then spray it in the winter and it just goes... Yeah, so, yeah. yeah so it's quite what's strange. The yeah. best way for people to find out when that best time is to contact. Yeah, well, it's certainly Environment Canterbury's biosecurity staff. Or, yeah. Um, yeah. While we've got a regulatory role, we're there to give a bit of advice, right. um, and we're quite happy to do that. Yeah. Um, Department of Conservation, uh, their field staff like Ian Hankin, who you were interviewing before, yeah. Ian's uh, got an awful lot of knowledge on weed control in his head and right. and, and organisations like Enzern, um, oh, yeah. what yeah. Bush Telly belongs to, is, um, you know, a lot of, there's a lot of knowledge in the community. So, yeah. yeah, so there's plenty of information out there if people need to That's right, find yeah, out. it's just yeah. a matter of asking for yeah. it really. And, and yeah. all those organisations can probably help with identifying yep. the plants Yeah, as well. cer- certainly, um, you know, if, if people see something strange and they think, oh, I haven't seen that before or that looks a bit like what I saw on yeah. YouTube on yeah. Bush Tally thing yeah. the other day or somewhere else or at a show, um, bring it into ECAN. If we don't know what it is, yeah. we've got an arrangement with uh, the herbarium at, at Lincoln and we just send it out there and they'll ID it for us. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and sometimes something new turns up with people doing that. Because, yeah. um, you know, I've got six in my team here and we look after from the Rangatata to the Waimakariri. Yeah. Um, we're, we're not everywhere. No, <laughs> the dock guys have only got you know, a dozen or so field staff, so yeah. we really rely on the public to yeah. report in something that they yeah. see that's a bit strange or they think's out of place, and yeah, it really is quite important. And that helps identify something before it becomes well, too much of an issue. Well, that's well. exactly right. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to, try, to actually eradicate any pest, um, Tomorrow morning we're going to be talking about rooks, which yeah. is one that, that we've made really good progress with, but um, plants probably even worse because the seeds can sit in the ground, you don't know they're there yeah. for a long time. Yeah. And um, 
you know, you really have to get in early. And a lot of people will say, what are you wasting all this money, you know, chasing this thing when there's all that gorse and broom or something else around? But yeah. the reality is if, if we crunch down really quickly on that when it first established, then there'd be millions of dollars saved in, over the last, past decade. So, so the earlier you can get on to something, the better. Mm. Well, that's great. Thank you very much, Rob. I've broken a camera. Oh. I broke the camera. Spider. <coughs> oh. Spider. <laughs>